Over the past few months, the current water level of Lake Mead calls for urgent action. However, as the water content of rivers and lakes is constantly fluctuating due to different factors, there might be a turn of events. Today, we're diving into the conditions at Lake Mead and its most recent update. Are you ready to find out? Continue watching this video to get more details. Lake Mead is located on the Colorado River and is formed by the Hoover Dam at Black Canyon, about 30 miles from Las Vegas. Previously, Mead was the most significant water source in the United States by volume, and its surface area was surpassed only by Lake Powell. Mead reached Pierce Ferry from Hoover Dam a few years back, which takes about 64 miles. Then, it had a width of 9.3 miles and a fluctuating shoreline of 550 miles. It was a significant water source for many states, and no one would ever imagine it drying up. Over the years, Lake Mead has been reducing, and now it has less than a third of its previous capacity. Drought, climate change, and population increase are some factors that have contributed to the reduction. The states that use more water from the lake have taken measures to reduce their water consumption. If this is not done, the lake will dry up in 10 to 15 years. A disaster. This shows that the lake has a few years left. The reduction in the water level is because of the increase in water usage and decrease in supply. It will be tragic if this lake eventually runs dry, because the power generated and the water supplied by the Hoover Dam to farms and towns will be cut off. Many businesses will be affected. This will also result in the Colorado River drying up, reducing the water supply in the southwest. If Lake Mead eventually dries up, it will be catastrophic. This shows it is an issue that requires urgent action, and strategies need to be implemented to solve the problem, or else several businesses will fold up. According to research, Lake Mead is at 38% of its capacity, and there's uncertainty about it returning to its original level. The lake is now at the lowest point it's ever been since its creation. The increase in water demand in the southwest limited the availability of water from the Colorado River, which provides water to more than 40 million Americans. Colorado is also the fuel source for hydropower in eight states. It supplies water to communities in the west whose mainstay is agriculture, and it's a source of employment to people in 30 tribal nations. A lot of people depend on Lake Mead. Can the lake return to its original level? Measures have been taken by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation to curb this problem, but if this proves futile, it can be a threat to the West. In April, the snowpack level increased by about 160%. This happened close to the basin of the Colorado River and its rocky mountain source. As stated by water managers, the beginning of April marks the increase in snowpack. At this time, already formed snow begins to melt, accumulating. This will result in 177% water inflow into the Colorado River this year. This has not happened for a long time. We have good news here. The melting snow has affected Lake Mead and influenced the level of other rivers and dams. The N Canyon and Hoover Dams have exceeded their water level since 1983. Since April 24th, more water has been entering Lake Mead from Lake Powell, giving Mead a 4.6 feet rise. This lake gets a 3 inches rise every day, and it's been anticipated that this increase in water level will continue to the end of May. Presently, Lake Mead has a water level of 1,051.76 feet. This is a good thing for businesses that take place around the lake. The melting snowpack in the Colorado Rockies gives Lake Powell a foot rise each day. Since May, this lake has experienced an approximately 15 feet increase in water level, and the drought could be over soon. The U.S. Bureau of Reclamation stated that the water entering Lake Powell is increasing each day. This started in April, the same as recorded in the spring and summer of 1983, when the water began to reduce. It was also recorded that this year was the first time in a while that the Colorado River Basin will get a lot of snowpacks to melt. Interestingly, Lake Mead's water level filled up, and the spilled water was channeled to the Hoover Dam spillways. This sounds like a miracle. As we notice an increase in the level of Lake Powell, reclamation data reveals that a large quantity of water is being emptied into Lake Mead through the Glen Canyon Dam. 
the US Bureau of Reclamation conducted a high-flow experiment on April 24th. This lasted for 72 hours, and it's led to a 40,000 cubic feet per second increase in the water discharge of Lake Powell. Before this experiment, the water discharge was around 10 to 15,000 CFS. Even after the end of this experiment, an increase in water discharge is still experienced, leading to a rise in the Lake Mead water level. Amidst this, why were the two water wells drilling permits in Alfalfa Farm cancelled by the state of Arizona? The Alfalfa Farm, owned by Saudi Arabia, is in the western portion of Arizona State and is a company run by Fondamente Arizona LLC. By employing sprinklers, alfalfa is grown in La Paz County and exported to Saudi Arabia, where it's fed to dairy cattle. Alfalfa, also called lucerne in the 18th century, is a vital forage crop worldwide. It's a legume used for silage, hay, cover crop, and green manure. This crop was first grown in Iran and has its origin in South Central Asia. Many farmers have tried and failed at growing the crop, but it's currently produced in the western and northern parts of the USA, and a little of it is developed by farmers in the southeastern United States. Fondamente uses underground water in Arizona to grow alfalfa. Saudi law thwarts the growth of the plants because it's too water-demanding for desert land. Arizona state authorities have revoked permission for the Saudi Arabia-owned alfalfa farm to drill two wells on their farmland. This is due to some unacceptable procedures in the company's policy and to limit groundwater use. The permit was revoked due to some inconsistencies found in the paperwork. According to Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays, the company listed different landowners, and it needed to be clarified if the water wells were new or mere replacements. The attorney revealed that the Saudi Arabian-owned company does not pay for the water it consumes. When this was noticed by the state officials, the warrants were revoked. The warrant was issued to Fondamente by the Arizona Department of Water Resources and was revoked a week after Mays announced it. This step was influenced by the Arizona State Land Department. This warrant was given within two months after the Arizona Republic allowed Fondamente and a few other companies to use groundwater with no oversight. It had to be revoked because the water in the site was the future water supply for Phoenix and the cities around it. Mays lamented in an interview how ridiculous it is for these companies to be allowed to drill more wells for the alfalfa farms, considering the quantity of water these wells will pump out. According to Mays, the amount of water pumped out of these wells is enough to serve up to 30,000 citizens of Arizona. Mays mentioned this is appalling because La Paz County only has 16,000 people. She said the water should be reserved for the people of Arizona and should not be open to any company, but must remain in the ground in La Paz County. The government is taking serious action to curb this. If not, the drought may last for many years. The Fondamente company already owns several wells on their western Arizona farm, close to Bose. That could be enough to keep them running their business. As of now, no one stated if Fondamente appealed the warrant. The Department of Water Resources needs to speak about May's role in cancelling the permit. Governor Katie Hobbs, a Democrat like May's, spoke against this action. She said May's has no exclusive authority to rescind the permit. An essential part of Mays' campaign for Attorney General was land and water use. Immediately after she got into office, she used her first month to work against the deal and break every connection the state had with Fondamente and other companies. Mays said in an interview that one of her primary goals is to keep creating policies that will protect the citizens of La Paz County and the groundwater supplies in Arizona State. Mays has accused the Department of Water Resources of needing to be more effective at ensuring the groundwater supplies kept safe. The political upheaval is just getting started. According to a letter she wrote to Tom Buschatsky, the head of the Department of Water Resources, the agency should have taken legal action towards restricting the active management areas. This ought to have been done since 1980, when there's been a noticeable decline in the groundwater level. She mentioned that groundwater conditions change over time, and the department should adapt and establish structures aligning with this circumstance. 
But while this circumstance keeps changing, the department must create strategies to preserve the water. Bushchansky and Governor Katie Hobbs have yet to respond to Mays' letter. Maybe they've finally accepted their mistake and are working on it. Aside from the groundwater conflict, Mays has confronted Hobbs for leasing state land to Fondamente. During her official visit to the company, located at Butler Valley, the attorney had an interview with CBS News where she surveyed the property. This was done with the aid of the state-owned airplane that CBS News reporter and videographer used. During that interview, she said the groundwater should be used by the people of Arizona and not foreign businesses. Mays called the act scandalous and said she would continue fighting for the public's interest. The attorney is making some progress. The state land department, governed by hops, has revoked the warrant that allows Fondamente to drill two wells on the state property. She also mentioned that she'll keep close tabs on every good permit granted by the state land department henceforth. Some other agencies are beginning to buy land near the Colorado River and have been granted the water right attached to the ground. She said the new property owners need to transfer the right to the appropriate body and the Department of the Interior will begin to approve the transfer. A farm in the Chibola Valley, La Paz County, along the Colorado River has made one such transfer. She said the department must create strategies that will help manage and conserve water, and the cumulative effect of each transfer should be duly considered. Due to the water shortages and the Colorado River, the Department of the Interior's Bureau of Reclamation published a draft Supplemental Environmental Impact Statement in April 2023 to modify the activities taking place at Glen Canyon and Hoover Dams. This was done to ensure that the Colorado River Basin and dependent communities are resilient to the dynamic climatic conditions and the current drought. This statement also envelops water deliveries and hydropower generation for over 40 million Americans. What other steps can the government take to prevent situations like Lake Meads, and how effective are they? The drought in the Colorado River has lasted for over two decades. As the government begins to create laws that will prevent water use by private enterprises, measures that will enforce water conservation should also be implemented. For example, using showerheads and low-flow toilets, fixing leaks, watering plants only when needed, reusing water when it can be done, and using grey water for flushing toilets and irrigation. Water use can also be limited by creating water usage restriction laws or pricing policies that restrict water usage. Encouraging the storage of water and constructing infrastructures that can store water, such as reservoirs and enhancing water management policies. Water usage between states can also be coordinated, and an awareness about the significance of water conservation should be created. These measures will not only help the people of Arizona withstand these days of drought, but will also prevent situations like this from happening again. It is the duty of all of us to contribute to water management practices to limit the surge of water crises such as that of Lake Mead. No positive action toward water conservation is insignificant. What contributions are you going to make as regards to water conservation? If you enjoyed this video, like and share it with friends. You should also subscribe and click the notification button to get updates from this channel. Thanks for watching.